So I've been taking the FX30 with me everywhere to test out its fullest potential. I've taken it to Korea, Taiwan, and Mexico to capture memories and also used it on commercial work as well. And surprisingly, this camera can do 99% of what the FX3 can do, at least for my use case. You get better low light on the FX3, but other than that, the FX30 still competes pretty hard with the FX3. The potential coming out of this camera is just amazing for its price. So today, I want to share how I color grade and how you can make the footage look beautiful coming from the FX30. Happy 2023 to everyone. My name is Victor and today we're going to go through how I color grade my FX30 footage. And first we're going to go through all the settings and that is the H.265 format internally, which is the XAVC HS. The reason why I use the HS format is because one, it is a mix of both worlds of the S and the SI meaning that it is compressed and also it gives you a better quality image in terms of the recording format from your camera. Now, one of the biggest requirements for this is to have an editing machine that has an H.265 accelerator. That means it's a media encoder and decoder so that it really processes it fast on your editing machine. And specifically what I use is an M1 Pro base model, 16 inch MacBook Pro, and I have a 16 gig RAM and that's all that I need. If you don't have a machine that has a media accelerator for H.264 or H.265, I suggest using the SI format because it's gonna give you the most uncompressed footage from your camera, but that means that it's gonna give you larger file size but it also is easier on your editing machine because your machine doesn't need to always decode and encode the files while you're editing. Now let's talk about exposure. For the FX30 and the FX3, I use Cine EI mode on EI 400 on the base ISO of 800. 90% of the time, nighttime and daytime, I usually leave it at zero on the metering so that I have a good range on the shadows and also a good range on the highlights. Now, if you're using an A7 IV or something that doesn't have a Cine EI shooting mode, or if you just wanna use flexible ISO mode, it's just sticking to the base ISOs of your camera on s 3 And for my cameras, the FX30 and the A7 IV, that is 800 base ISO. And then for the FX30, 2500 is the second base ISO. And for the A7 IV is 3200 second base ISO. Just gonna give you a better dynamic range. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna get rid of all the noise, but it would have the cleanest image from both of those base ISOs. And in terms of metering, I usually just expose it from zero to plus one, and then I get similar results with the Cine EI mode. That's everything you need to know before you get into color grading, really nailing the settings and the exposure first before you push your color grade is a big must. Okay, let's start off with footage from Mexico. This is the cenote scene. It's gonna look like this in the beginning. You don't have anything. We're gonna turn off the effects and we're gonna do the clip here so that we have more real estate for the video. Okay, so I'm gonna apply my VL workflow right here so that my node structures are here. The node structure is similar to the layer structure, it's just a little different than layers. I like the node structure better, but if you're editing in Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you might have to work with layers and kind of understand just how you arrange everything. So this is the bottom and this is all the way to the top. Okay, on here, let's start with the CSD. I'm gonna use my own personal LUT, which is the film LUT. You don't need to use my LUT, so you can use CSD in here. Let me guys show you the free way of utilizing this one. You go CSD, and then we're gonna look for Sony S-Log 
S gamut 3 dot cine and then the S log 3. And then what we're going to do is output color space as rec 709. And same thing with this one, rec 709. And we're just going to turn this on. Perfect. And this is kind of like how you would normally do it. And if you've shot everything on S log 3, you can actually just disable this or delete that node and go to project settings. And once you go to project settings, you go to input lookup table, and then we're going to find S log 3, S gamma 3 dot cine to LC minus 709. And it's pretty much going to be the same thing. And it's just going to apply it to all of your footage instead of you manually doing it on every footage. So since I've developed my own LUTs, I'm going to use it because I love using my LUTs. I developed it for my style and that we're going to use it all throughout in this tutorial. And you also have the free version or whatever conversion LUTs that you want to use in your videos. So let's get started. This is the my conversion LUT and I'm just going to add maybe two points of green. That's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go with 26 and a touch because in the cenote what happened is that there's a lot of greens reflecting through these mossy rocks and the trees as well so the skin tones is going to get affected on that and we're going to isolate that a little bit later okay so first things first we're going to balance the image meaning that we want to really neutralize the colors and make sure that it's neutral as possible so that we can really push the looks so in this case i don't really have any reference in terms of whites or blacks uh, what we can do is kind of just neutralize the blacks and maybe the whites on here so it's not having any color cast on the neutral tones so we know we're balanced what we're going to do is we're going to neutralize the whites on my hair and the blacks on my hair because this is the only reference point that i have right click and then you're going to go show picker rgb value and we're just going to go to qualifier so you can see the value so far i'm just going to get an average of what color is missing so far i think we are losing a little bit of red so we're just going to add a touch to see if it all balances out 6 8 10 11 we're almost all even so i'm just gonna leave it at that again we don't have a card here this is a travel video so we're just gonna eyeball it as best as we can with the tools that we have in davinci okay so now i'm gonna try and see if i'm missing anything on the white values 78 maybe less green to here perfect okay I think we're fairly balanced as long as the RGB values fall in line. Now we're going to go with white balance. What we're going to do now is we're just going to add a little bit of warm cast in there because it was casting some orangey tones when the sun was hitting us inside the cenote. From here on, I'm just going to leave the skin for now because we're going to do heavy grading later. And we're this is the adjustment for the skin tones. So far, if we go to vector scope, we can see that it's almost at the skin tone line. The reason why I'm leaving it first, because I want to see how it looks later. My skin tone is a little bit reddish and it falls under this line. It's not directly on this line because it's going to get us somewhere like uh, if we touch this, it's going to give me like really reddish skin tones. And that's not my skin tone. My skin tone is a little just under it. Now I want to adjust the exposure for this one. So let's go back to waveform. And what I like to do is bring down the highlights a little bit so that it's around this area. As you can see, it's more appealing with the roll off and we're just going to lift the blacks a little bit, kind of just like an S curve. And that's it. Now we're going to do the look. I want to desaturate a little bit of everything here. So we're going to go with color boost, maybe minus six and then increase the saturation, maybe like 65. So what it does is that it just sucks out a little bit of the color with the little neutral tones and that 
we're bringing everything back. Uh, that's too much. And that we're bringing everything back. So what happens here is that the color boost really just decreases the value of the saturation on each level in a numerical form. And then saturation, we're increasing that by 15%. It's more like a multiplier. And as you can see here, the blacks and the neutral tones are a little bit more neutral and that it's a little bit more even, especially for my hair and the lights and the shadows. Okay, we're gonna leave the look adjust for now. We're gonna turn it off and then the exposure. I'm just gonna separate the enhancer. This is going to be my PFE, which is the film print. And then we're gonna reset the sharpen and we're gonna go PFE adjust. PFE is your print film emulation. We're gonna use the Kodak 2383. You're gonna see how well it looks on this footage. And then what we're gonna do here is the bloom and halation. Okay, so let's shape the light a little bit. If you can see here, the Cenote has really nice guard rays coming in. And with this one it is a little flat. So we're gonna shape that in post with a vignette and we're gonna create a new power window and we're just gonna kind of create a god ray focusing on the subject and then we're going to hit invert and we're just going to squeeze this down a little bit and you see how exaggerated it is so what we're going to do is a little bit darker kind of like this and then we're going to soften it and currently i think in my opinion it kind of looks okay Maybe lift it up just a tiny bit. That's perfect. All right. All right. So let's go to Dehancer. Dehancer is optional. You can actually get this for free as well. Like you can use Rec. 709, 2383, D5560, 65, whatever you want. But I personally use Dehancer because I've just been loving the plugin. And you can try it out if you want to. I think there's two weeks free trial for you to do. So everything should be disabled because we don't want anything uh, but the print. And then we're going to do Kodak 2383, enable that. And it's a little bit weird right now. That's why we started with the PFE adjust. We're going to try to find the black point. We're going to enable this where it looks natural and then the white point as well where it looks natural you can see that it adds a lot of contrast so we're gonna try and reduce that tonal contrast and then the target white is the white balance that you started with so we had a little warmer tone so we're gonna do that in negative and then color density i'm gonna just increase that so that we get the saturation back now we're gonna go back to PFE adjust. This is where we're going to try and get the exposure back to where we started with. And I think that looks good. And then now what we can do, since we now have this look, we're going to enable the look adjust and kind of just increase this offset. So we have more contrast to play with afterwards. Okay, so that's good. Perfect. And then with the look as well, I want to add a little bit of blue in the shadows. Perfect. And then some green cast to it. Awesome. And then from the PFE adjust, what happens if you do the print film emulation, the Kodak 2383, we can increase the saturation because it sucks it out. Perfect. That's good. So now without the PFE, it looks like this it looks normal, but with the PFE is a little more stylized. Now the problem with this one is the skin tones. It's too orange. We're going to go back to the skin node 
And what we're going to do is go back to vector scope. You can see that it's a little bit too pushed. We're going to use the magic mask over here and then we're going to select a person mask. And then we're just going to use this tool, just draw a line and it should automatically find it for us and to see where it's clipping and it's already masked the person in the video. After it loaded up the mask, we're just going to smooth in the edges so that it's not too obvious when we change colors. So we're going to do blur radius a little bit more and then denoise it clean black clean white we're gonna add we're gonna do the radius maybe grow no we're gonna shrink it and then we're just gonna keep blurring it so that the edges are softer and then denoise for sure what I do is that we're just going to magic mask everything. So now it's going to follow the subject. Great. Okay. Now. Now what we can do here is that bringing everything back. And that looks perfect. Now I can see that it's just right below the skin tone line. And if we push it to the skin tone line, I just become more magenta or pinkish. And I don't want that. This is more of my natural color. And then we're done with the correction and the look. We're just going to add finishing touches, which is the bloom. Uh, we're going to go to the enhancer again. And we are going to disable everything and then we're going to stick with halation and bloom so what we're going to do is we're going to keep the bloom a little bit there that's good and then the halation maybe a little tiny bit on the rocks and now it's affecting the face a little bit so uh, what we can do is that we're going to copy this and then create a new node. And then this is going to be halation. And then paste it there. We're going to enable the bloom and then we're going to enable the halation on this one so that the bloom affects all the entirety of the image. And then this is just halation. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask to the subject right here and then soft right there invert. So everything gets halation, but my skin tones and then we're going to track it as well. Click it here and then it's going to track everything. Okay. So let's turn it off and let's view the file. That looks good. It's very dreamy. And at the end, we're just going to do the grain and make sure that everything is disabled. And then we're going to go to the film grain, which is this guy. And that's a little too much. So we're going to go film resolution to 80 and then we're going to go shadows, maybe under 20 and we're done. This is our look right here. Okay, so next up, we're going to match this to the other Sinote footage. What we're going to do is grab a still right here, and then we just drag this. We're going to disable the skin and also delete the power grade for the halation. This is a little bit too much on the halation. So what we're going to do is we are just going to bring it down a tad. And then I do want the bloom to be a little bit dreamier. So we're just going to really push that. So the trees is a little bit more bloomy. Okay. So we're going to go for the adjust because the bottom part of the cenote is the, like the stairs is a little too underexposed. So we're just going to bring that a tiny bit. 
and we're gonna go to our waveform just to make sure everything looks good okay right there and then we're gonna bring down the middles just a tad and then just the highlights a tiny bit um final touches right here and what I want to do is add another adjust here for the stairs. I mean, you can do this on a parallel node or something. I'm just showing you guys how I step by step do this. And we are going to go to U versus U uh, versus saturation. And we're going to get that red color. And we're just going to increase the saturation so it bumps up. So it pops a little bit more because without it, it's looking a little dull. And with it, now we have some leading lines and contrasting to the blue and the green as well. Okay, so now what we can do is grab this still because we're gonna do the same thing with this shot. And as you can see, this is a little bit better. We're just gonna delete the stair adjustment because it's pushing a little bit of the colors on there. And all I have to do is go back to the adjustment layer and make sure that we're and make sure that we have good exposure on this one. The Sonata was a little dark and that I wanted to have a moody look, high contrast look with the sun rays hitting the pool. So now this is our footage, all three footage. And then what we can do actually here is that crush it just a tiny bit so it matches the mood of these two shots now we're gonna move on to the nighttime shots in taiwan and let me show you guys how to quickly grade this and we're just gonna go on to my power grade again via workflow and this is quite easy so let's go to cst what we're gonna do is we're gonna do add the film LUT and then add the green tint to it Perfect. Now, as you can see that the highlights and the shadows are a little bit crushed. So we're going to go to the adjust. We're going to ignore everything else. We're going to quickly grade this to show you guys how I can easily manipulate the footage without even like fully analyzing everything. I mean, the grade can be pushed, but for me, especially for YouTube, it needs to be fast. And with this one, we're going to decrease the highlights with the curves. You can also do it here for more accuracy, but I usually do curves for YouTube work. And uh, as you can see here, we're actually going to go to the parade here that the highlights are clipping a little bit. It's probably on this one and this one and this one as well, because we couldn't retain anything for those lights. So since it's low light, we do want it to be dark but the shadows are now crushed. We're gonna lift it up just a tiny bit so that we get a little bit more footage on there. And then, and then, now we can add a little bit more green. And then we're gonna go to the look, which we're gonna add some blue tones to it or some green tones to the shadows, teal or green, doesn't matter. And then the gamma to a little cooler tone to the blue side that's a little too much actually and then orange on the highlight so we have some contrasting patterns on there now since this is a wide shot we don't really need to take care of the skin we can still do it and make sure that the skin tones are good but so far it's not really affecting everything and that we only adjust it a tiny bit for the look and this is without the look, this is with the look. So now we have that gritty green cast vibe that you see on my videos. Now we're gonna add Dehancer on here. We're gonna do the PFE as well because I love that profile. And then we're gonna reset the sharpen to just adjust. And then what we're gonna do is enable PFE Kodak 2383 print film. And we're just gonna adjust the colors. And then from here on, we're just gonna adjust the white balance to maybe a cooler tone. And now this is kind of a true 
orange and teal look low light footage and we're just going to adjust the highlights again and the shadows so that we retain the information with here because before we had the information on there but with the print film emulation it kind of just ups the contrast a lot more and that we're going to do color density a lot uh, and then play around with the target white on this one and then the black point uh, shift it all the way here so that we get some values on the dark side and then the bloom the bloom is a little bit too much so we're just going to really give that oh right here i do like it a little bit more perfect okay so this is the halation we're just gonna give it just a tiny bit and then since the bloom and halation did something to the highlights we're gonna adjust it again a little bit lower perfect and then maybe a darker vibe with everything last but not least the film grain i love film grain and that we're gonna add this shadows all under 30 and we're done this is the final look and then we're just gonna copy everything again to the other footage right here this is actually almost done just gotta lift up the blacks a little bit and this is the final look. As you can see, the computer can't handle the answer, but um, it really looks good. I like it. Similar to the Korea one, what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust this tiny bit more. Okay, that's good. Perfect. And then we're just going to push the greens a little bit more on this one. Right there. Perfect. And now we're going to adjust the skin tones because now it's too green. Okay. And then this one. That's perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And what we can actually do is this. Perfect. So the skin tones is kind of back to normal. And now you have this orange and teal or kind of just green subway look into this video. Uh, it's a little saturated in my taste. And her skin tone is actually closer to yellow. And what we're going to do is going to go use saturation. Give it just a negative value on there. And then there you go. We're looking at a super green cast and then apply the skin adjustment. We're looking at normal skin tones again with a little green cast to it. So fine, it looks good what it is. And then we're just gonna do the same here. We're gonna change the adjust because it's a little dark on here, mid tones and everything especially with the PFE. And then again, we're going to give it a greener look right there from the top to the bottom. And that's it. My original video didn't have the dehancer one. So it's just the green look and we're going to delete this one. And all I did was add more green cast to it and then darken these parts while increasing the saturation and also warmed it up a little bit. And that's it. That's how I color grade everything in DaVinci Resolve. And I hope you learned something new and that if you do have any questions about anything that we went through today, feel free to comment down below and we're bringing it back. I'm giving away my SLOG3 LUT pack and all you have to do to win is comment down below what one specific thing you learned 
in this video. I will announce the winner in the next video. If you want to watch another color grading video of mine, click on this video right here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. No one now.